Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil Shirati, a professor and consultant. So in today's session, that is session 8 on module 3, we will be dealing with what you mean by cash flow diagram, how you draw this cash flow diagram, then what are the different compound interest factors. So cash flow diagrams, the cash flow diagram are the simple graphical representation of money inflow and outflow. The cash flow diagram is the tool which will help for decision makers to understand and solve the problem regarding payments, expenditure, receipts, etc. Now let's see a simple cash flow diagram both from borrower's viewpoint and from lender's viewpoint. Now in general we will draw a horizontal line which is a time frame line so where we will be defining years, month okay. So in this example I am defining number of years say let's say 0 to 5 years. Now the top portion of the uh, line is used when the money is coming inside or there is an inflow of money and if there is an outflow of money it is taken as negative that is the down portion of this line. Okay. Now what do you mean by inflow or outflow? Inflow is if I am receiving any money okay maybe because of the sales or because someone is making me pay payment or I am having some savings all these are towards the inflow side that is positive side. If I am having any maintenance or I have to pay any bills all this is coming outflow because money is going out of my pocket. Now this cash flow diagram is from the borrower's viewpoint. Now what is who is the borrower? Now borrower is a person let's say he is taking a loan from the bank. Now in this case a person is taking a loan from the bank of rupees. 50,000. Now he is a borrower okay, and bank is a lender. So what happens at 0th year that the start of the year he will receive an amount 50,000 from the bank as a loan. So that's why he is receiving the amount that's why it is towards the inflow that is a positive side. Now what happened as he has taken a loan he has to pay back with some interest okay and let's assume every year he is paying 11,000 in equal installments. So what happens from borrower's point of view every year at the uh, uh, first year he has to pay 11,000, second year 11,000 so at the end of every year he is paying some 11,000 at some specific interest rate let's say in this case I am just showing you 10%. So this is called the cash flow diagram. So see, he has taken a loan so that's why positive and he has paying back in uh, uh, at, at the end of every year so that's why 11,000 rupees repayment so money is going out of his pocket now this is the cash flow from the borrower's point of view or I can say a customer who is taking a loan from point of view. but what about from the lender's point of view the person who is giving the money in this case let's the amount is coming uh, bank is giving a loan so what happens from if I see the cash flow diagram from the banker's point of view or from the lender's point of view at the zero tier this 50,000 he is going from his pocket okay he is going out of the bank so that's why the loan is 50,000 showing towards the outflow side of that is negative side and every year he is receiving a constant amount of 11,000 that's why it is an inflow side. Okay. Now this is a situation like our EMI's type we are taking a loan and paying some constant uh, amount okay now there may be a different uh, cash flow diagram so where you may have uh, instead of uh, uh, constant it may be varying also okay. now what do you mean by compound interest factor one can translate cash flow to a given time by determining either it is a present worth or it is a future worth. Okay. Now a present worth calculation converts a single payment or series of such future values to an equivalent amount at an earlier date. 
which may not be necessary a presented so in present worth calculation everything whatever uh, transaction either inflow or outflow happens in the future it is moved to the zeroth position that is the present position okay the future worth is the reverse of present worth so uh, what happens is whatever the transaction happening it will goes to a some future date okay so instead of uh, moving it to zero i will move to some specific uh, time let's say on 10th year or any transaction happens at zero first second third it has moved to the 10th year so that is called as future uh, worth calculation we can calculate equivalent amount by determining the compound interest amount for each sum each sum for each period this method cumbersome and can be avoided using compound interest tables for different present worth and future worth factor so when uh, compound interest will help you to calculate uh, the situation suppose you are you want to stop at 10th year you want to instead of uh, doing uh, present worth you want to do future worth all these calculations are helpful using compound using compound interest table and also this different methods of comparison will help you to take a decision at a faster rate from economics point of view okay now uh, let's see this uh, compound interest factors using a simple uh, situation in this situation a current expenditure for graduation is rupees 4 lakhs and please find the amount required for the same course after 5 years so what happens let's say a person a parent decide okay after 5 years uh, the uh, my son or daughter has to do graduation and the cost for the current graduation is 4 lakhs okay so uh, currently he is here and he says uh, he has evaluated the valuation is 4 lakhs he want to know what will be the future amount he may need if the rate of interest is 10 percent okay what will be the graduation cost at this time so this can be solved very easy, easily using com, uh, com, compound factor uh, tables and equations now there may be a situation uh, uh, reverse also okay like this situation where how much money a person should invest now if he needs rupees 10 lakhs at the end of 10th year for his daughter's marriage so here what has happened he has estimated okay after 10 years i may need approximately 10 lakhs rupees for the marriage so what i want to do is i want to keep one amount let's say in this case x in a bank in a fixed deposit at a rate of interest rate 10 percent so that at the end of 10th year i will get 10 lakhs so i want to know how much amount i should pay keep it in the bank it, it whether it is 2 lakh 4 lakh 5 lakh what is the amount if the rate of interest charged by bank uh, given by bank is 10 percent so this also can be used use uh, calculated using present worth method there may be also a situation where instead of doing a single payment i want to do every year some x amount of payment let's say 11000 and i want to know at the end of 10th year at an interest rate of 10 percent what is the amount I, I will get okay so this is the situation uh, which is explained here now to do all this uh, comparison analysis we can use compound interest factors additionally we can use compound interest tables so generally uh, the basic compound interest factors are divided into two parts one is to convert a single amount to a present or a future date next is a series of uniform values called as annuity so what it means is in the first case whatever the transactions happen all these transactions are moved to a single amount either to a present value or a future date next is whatever the transaction happens over the time period of time they are uniformly uh, converted into an annual amount okay and that is called a series of uniform uh, annuity now there are seven different uh, factors we will see in brief in next slides the first one is single payment compound amount factor second single payment present worth factor 
third uniform series sinking fund factor fourth uniform series compound amount factor fifth uniform series capital recovery factor sixth uniform series present worth factor seventh arithmetic gradient conversion factor for uniform series so let's see the first one a single payment compound amount factor so you can see here this is the situation what I explained you earlier. If I am depositing an amount P at the present at an interest rate of I, I want to know what is the future amount I will get F when at N year or N period. So this can be done using, we, we know this can be easily calculated using this equation. Okay. Now this can be represented in a simple equation using uh, this sequence so what this sequence is in this f is unknown okay so we are writing unknown that is f that will be equal to now the known is p the present so p then it is numerator by denominator numerator which is unknown that is f divided by the denominator that is p which is known value comma what is the rate of interest i and what is the period we are moving n okay now in this example if let's say p is 10000 okay let's say p is 10000 i is let's say 10 percent and f uh, n is let's say 20 so what happens is this can be uh, calculated as F is equal to 10,000 okay, multiplied by P by F then I is 10 percent then N is 20. Now out of this one, this can be easily calculated using compound interest table which will be seen in the next session. Okay. And or you can even use this equation but as you see in the future slides the equation will become go on complicated. Okay. And instead of this one P if I have two three P's here at different times this equation will become very big and very difficult to calculate. Okay using the simple equation instead of that we will go for compound interest table the next one so whatever you saw this equation can be uh, this is the derivation which I have shown you okay so what happens in this derivation and uh, this we did in last session also so if I have to find this value at F here that is nothing but P plus the interest rate I okay so that is becomes P plus 1 plus I now if I want to do F2 that will be F1 into uh, the interest okay so this if I rearrange it will get like this so this one is nothing but F1 is the principal amount okay plus the interest for that in the second year is F1 whatever the principal left into I. so if I rearrange I will get like this and at the end this is the uh, equation I will get for single payment compound fact not what about uh, uh, instead of, uh, uh, of uh, present worth I want uh, so, uh, instead of uh, future worth I want to present value of that one so whatever the uh, discussion I did for a case where a person wants rupees 10 lakhs at the end of uh, uh, 10th year for his daughter's marriage so he wants to invest an amount now so that situation is represented here so I have an idea about the amount of the future what is the rate of interest is known to me and the number of years or period is known and I want to know what is its present value so that situation is nothing but single payment present worth factor Similarly, what about the uniform series sinking fund factor? That is nothing but I want to uh, have a constant, uh, sorry, I, I have an idea about 
what is the future amount I want and I want to know what is the uniform amount I have to uh, use it now so you can see here that is constant age so this can be used using this equation okay that is f into i by 1 plus i raised to n minus a so whatever the transaction is f is converted into a constant a values okay. then uh, this is the calculations what we have shown now for uniform uh, series uh, compound factor also it is same but in this case it is the reverse of the earlier one here a is known to me okay I am investing a constant amount a and I want to know what is the future amount I am getting okay then next is uniform series capital recovery factor so in this case what is happening is I, I know what is the present value okay at zeroth position I know the value that is the P okay and I want to know in the future if I want to convert that P at an interest rate of I what should be the constant A values okay so that can be used using this equation if you want to calculate using the calculators or if you want to use it with simple uh, compound interest table we will be using this equations or representation now uh, this is the reverse of the last one where I know what is the future amount I want okay and I want to know what should be the present value of that one okay now there may be a situation uh, where uh, in all this part you can see the a value is constant right yeah but there may be a situation where the a value may be uh, not constant so that is called an arithmetic gradient conversion factor for uniform series so you can see like this series where what is happening uh, uh, let's say first year a is a dash second year is increasing by a dash plus g a dash plus 2g so there is a gradient okay so for example this may be let's say uh, 1000 then increasing every year by 100 so let's say this may be 1100 then it is 1200 okay and so on and so forth so what is happening when the situation comes for example if you have a machine what happens the annual maintenance for first year will be less but as the age of the machine goes definitely the annual maintenance cost is goes on increasing okay. so like this situation how, how you deal, deal with there may be a situation where it is reverse also so first year it may be more and second year it may go on reducing so instead of here it will be 1000 then minus 900 sorry 900 then uh, 800 like this go on decreasing also so situations may be uh, both sides so let's say the plus side so what happens we are converting this series into a constant value series okay so how this is done you can see here a dash it is go on increasing and this has to be converted into this value so what what I am doing is this chart is converted into a constant value which is denoted by so every year it is constant okay so this a that is what I am representing here. so how, how, how you calculate that one and once I do this one uh, uh, there is a relationship between constant a that is convert constant annuity to the present worth is also relation is there also the future worth relation is already available in the earlier slides or earlier factors I have shown okay so this is the end of the uh, today's session so in today's uh, session we saw different compound uh, interest factors okay and also we saw what you mean by cash flow diagram so in next class we will be solving few problems on this uh, different uh, cash flow compound factors if you have any questions you can contact me either you can mail me or you can uh, text me thank you everyone